everybody and welcome to the second edition of Boundary. This is an initiative as part of the Daryl Conference and we are thrilled to share with you the second component on boundaries, your mental health and implementing them at the workplace. Thank you so much for taking the time and putting this together, Brandon. Would you please give us a little bit of info on what the previous session was about? And if you haven't watched the previous session, please jump in there. There's some really good content. Without further ado, I give it to you, Brandon. All right, so uh, thanks so much, Janine. Um, yeah, so basically uh, the last time we basically just went through um, why I'm talking about this, a quick introduction about myself, um, how setting boundaries has uh, impacted my personal life, um, also on um, what exactly boundaries are, uh, the benefits of boundaries, the types of boundaries, um, the difference between uh, physical, emotional, and intellectual boundaries, as well as the different um, boundary problems one might, uh, might experience. Um, also, what boundaries aren't and uh, the benefits of boundaries, which I think I already mentioned, um, as well as the signs one, one needs to look out for, um, for when you might to set boundaries, uh, clear signs that, that that show you might have to have boundaries in your life. Um, so yeah, today we're going to start uh, just talking about uh, what causes someone to be a yes or a, a compliant person as well as um, a, a no person and we're going to go from there on and yeah, um, see uh, how to implement boundaries and how to implement healthy boundaries. So yeah, um, I think let's uh, start on start off with um, what causes me to be a yes person or um, a compliant person, uh, as mentioned in the the, the previous um, show. All right, so uh, yes people and no people, uh, saying yes or no to to everything, compliant and avoidant people. So what causes you to become a yes person? Now these people, they're usually people that say yes to things that might be unhealthy for them. Um, an example of this would be uh, going out with friends when you're not financially stable or in a financially good state to do so, uh, or when your budget won't allow it. So basically just saying yes, just to keep everyone happy, just to be the people pleaser. Um, in the spectrum of uh, assertiveness um, that, I, that I mentioned earlier, this would also be um, passive people. Uh, like complete on the different spectrum of passive, aggressive, uh, or assertive. Um, so yeah, uh, what actually causes you to be a yes person? So you can look out for things like uh, the want to keep everyone happy, um, a very low self-esteem, um, how you see other people see you. So the perception of how you think other people see you, uh, cultural beliefs, as in, um, no, it's rude to say no, or uh, it's not right to say no, uh, even if it might not be healthy for you. Um, a strive for, percep uh, for perfectionism. Um, parenting, and this is quite a big one. So if somebody doesn't take a responsibility for themselves and then you sort of um, go out of your way to make this person this person is happy, even though it might not be your responsibility. Uh, as mentioned previously, um, you are responsible for what is you. E everything else that's not you, uh, you're not responsible for that. You, you are responsible for your happiness, nobody else's. Um, all right, so now we're going to move on to uh, what causes you to be a um, avoidant person or a no person. Uh, these are people that are defined as people who might say no to on a regular basis to things that might be good for you. Um, example of this might be people who isolate themselves from the outside world instead of spending at least some time with uh, loved ones or friends or um, stuff like that. Um, or, you know, just get out there, you know. Um, I, I think a lot of us have, have experienced with this whole COVID situation, uh, being isolated in, in, in one place for a very long time has a very negative, negative effect on a person's mental state. I've experienced this myself. Um, and yeah, had quite a big hit on me. Um, all right, so what causes one to become a no person? Um, 
this this is a quite extensive list. Uh, it varies from discrimination, broken trust, physical, emotional abuse. Uh, once again, the perception that you think other people have of you. Uh, if you think people have a negative perception of you, you would avoid these people and you would, of course, just stay around yourself and uh, not let anybody close. Um, or if in a previous state, if somebody took advantage of your kindness, um, childhood wounding, betrayal, um, it could also be culture. Um, like if, if, if your cultural belief is that you shouldn't do something, but this specific thing might be healthy or your belief is that it might be, be healthy for you. Uh, culture might be a setback to make you become, uh, to make you say no to the specific thing or make you become a, a, a um, all right, so now we're going to focus on what or why one might find it difficult to implement their boundaries in their lives. Um, or what's sort of a blocker for setting boundaries? Or what causes fear of setting boundaries? So the first and most obvious one I would say is the, the fear of rejection. If you start implementing boundaries and um, communicating them with others, uh, they might not include you in specific activities or um, stuff that they have planned. Um, the want to keep people happy, in your life, um, you might fear setting boundaries because it might um, make other people um, sad or depressed or, you know, uh, make them feel unwanted or pushed away. Um, not wanting to seem selfish, um, a strive for perfectionism, want to seem perfect in front of everyone. Um, or having the irrational ideas that um, others' happiness should be put before your own happiness. Um, a good friend once told me to take care of myself first, as you can't help anyone if you're not if you're not well yourself. Um, another thing that uh, might help you or, or might inhibit you from setting boundaries or make you struggle to set boundaries would be having the idea that you don't count as a person, that you're not important. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very uh, bad train of thought to go into. Um, and now we're going to focus on common, common mistakes people make when setting boundaries or um, not fully understanding what boundaries are and then trying to uh, trying to set boundaries. OK, so. Um, confusing boundaries with demands. Boundaries are not demands. Uh, as mentioned previously, they are um, choices you allow other people to make. And then based on those choices, uh, there might be acceptance or, or, or repercussions or uh, consequences that they might might face um, depending on, 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 on what they chose to do. Um, making unclear agreements. So not clearly discussing what a specific boundary entails or how you feel about or why you're implementing this boundary. Um, not being committed. Uh, if your boundaries fail or if you set a boundary that you know is healthy for you, um, giving up on that boundary because it affects another person, uh, even though this boundary is very good for you. Um, or not knowing what to do when a boundary does not work. This is where consequences um, and uh, repercussions are taken when a specific boundary or personal boundary isn't adhered to. Um, knowing and using ultimate or knowing what ult the difference between ultimatums and boundaries and using ultimatums instead of boundaries. So this would be uh, you telling a person, OK, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. That would be an ultimatum when setting boundaries would be. Um, OK, so I'm not quite comfortable with this or the way you handle this. I would prefer if you handle it this way. Um, we'll go more into detail on this when we talk about negotiable and non non negotiable and non negotiable boundaries which are which are quite important as well so um yeah let's step right into the, the examples of negotiable and non negotiable boundaries so uh, negotiable boundaries this is an example of this would be when your partner would ask you to constantly talk 
uh, on WhatsApp, or if, you don't, if 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 they give you if they give you flack for not responding in a timely manner uh, when you're like at work or something like that, uh, or wants to constantly call you during the day. So you could negotiate by saying the following. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that. It might distract me at work. Um, however, I can call you during lunch, or I can call you before work, or I can call you in the evening after work, or whenever I find a gap. Um, that, that, that would be a, a good example of a negotiable boundary. Now, a non-negotiable boundary is any physical or sexual or no any physical or sexual boundary is non-negotiable as a person has the right to determine how close or not another person is allowed to come to them. Um, no means no. That's a very, very important point. Um, that's a non-negotiable boundary. That's something you're not willing to compromise on. Um, an example of a non-negotiable boundary would be abuse or unfaithfulness that you've experienced with a partner. Um, it's, all, it's very important to note that when you do set boundaries, uh, you might experience um, some pushback or, or resistance. Um, I'm also going to give examples of this or, and um, sort of a tool set that you can use when you do experience these kinds of boundaries. Um, so like I said, it's important to realize some way some people aren't going to be uh, comfortable with this because this isn't the person that you used to be. Um, you finally identified uh, what is good and bad for you. Um, so uh, ex here's an example of um, resistance or pushback. So when I would say something like, this is me setting a boundary. Um, when you enter my room or knock, or without knocking or, or without my consent, I experience this as, a, as an invasion of privacy. And in the future, I would prefer that uh, if you're not, uh, you wait until I answer and tell you it's okay to enter before entering. Um, this is just a, a, um, one of the examples that, that I've experienced uh, in, in my life. Uh, if you use this in the work in the workplace, it could be your office, it could be um, working like your your focus time if, if we could call it that um, an example of pushback that you can experience with the example that I just mentioned would be someone saying why are you so rigid or why are you like this all of a sudden um, so yeah uh, here's a list of tools that you can use uh, when you do experience resistance or pushback um, but, um, the politician, which is the, um, the first example I would like to use. So this, the politician method would um, require self-concept, the way you view yourself. When this is established, you communicate to others that you respect yourself, that you have integrity, and that you value your time. Time is important. Um, and people shouldn't just waste your time or, or, or they should value your time as much as you value your time. Um, you could, of course, just say nothing. This, of course, communicates that you do not agree with, uh, with some, or you do not agree with the way that somebody is treating you or with an opinion that they have expressed over you. There's also a relational time out. This is more of a, of, a, of a consequence when someone oversteps a boundary. Um, of course, if someone oversteps uh, a boundary the first time, you can you can communicate with them and tell them, okay, you've overstepped this boundary. If you overstep this boundary again, there is going to be a consequence to this. Uh, this has to be clearly communicated to all parties. Um, where was I? Uh, when somebody oversteps a boundary that you have clearly discussed with them, this should be implemented by allowing your space, yourself space and time from those who do constantly overstep your boundaries. Um, if, if they value time with you, uh, they would stop overstepping your boundaries and they would uh, respect your boundaries more as the time out is sort of a, a, a consequence that they might experience if they do do it again. Um, and a very, very powerful one, and one I've mentioned um, in the first session as well as this session, uh, the choice. Uh, you discuss the implications that overstepping has and that uh, the other people or the other parties have a choice to make 
and clearly communicate that if they do, do choose to overstep that boundary, they are making a choice. And this in turn may force you to make a choice on how, how and if or when you spend time with this person, if you do spend time with this person anymore. Uh, so this is, of course, also if they make a choice, you have a choice to to implement your consequences or uh, to reprimand them based on, on what they did. Um, all right. Now, on a bit of a lighter note, this is going to we're going to talk about what healthy boundaries will allow you to do. Um, so healthy boundaries will allow you to restore or get a high self-esteem and self-respect, which is very, very important. Uh, it's also going to give you more confidence when you have a high self-esteem and self-respect for yourself. Um, I also th think that this goes hand in hand with uh, politician, the politician resistance and pushback toolbox or the tool that you can use. Um, also, something that I've um, felt vic fell victim to or uh, that something that I've done myself is uh, share personal information too, too quickly. Um, to people or um, just share to too many people. Um, healthy boundaries also allow you to share this information gradually. Uh, this will help you identify who you can trust with what information and um, who you should share which information with. Um, everybody doesn't need to know everything about you. Um, healthy boundaries will allow you to protect your space, physical and emotional from intrusion. Of course, this is only when boundaries are communicated with other people. Um, this would also allow you to have an equal partnership where responsibility and power in a relationship are shared. Um, it should be, it, there's this one thing that I heard that a relationship should be 50-50. I do not believe it should be 50-50. I believe it should be 100%, 100%. Um, uh, power and responsibility in a relationship should be shared between both people and should get a, give 100% when, when it comes to relationships. Um, healthy relationship or healthy boundaries will also allow you to be assertive. So this would allow you to say yes or no and without feeling guilty or hurt when others be, when other people say no to you. Um, this would also allow you to separate your needs, your thoughts, your dreams, your feelings, your desires from other people's. Um, this allows you to know what you need in life and what, what is healthy and what is good to you. Um, this would also allow you to ask for help or admit guilt um, when you need it. Um, also allows you to empower yourself by making informed decisions without fear or anxiety by being more in control of your surroundings. Um, it allows others to make their own decisions or face the consequences thereof when they have made um, uh, bad decisions or uh, if they have made a choice uh, when you have clearly um, communicated your boundaries with them. All right, so finally, I'd like to introduce a five step boundary solution. So these are steps you can take um, when you have identified that you might need boundaries in your life. Um, the first one I'd like to look, or look at is identify your reality. Um, be realistic about your needs and your wants and uh, your relationships. If something's not going to work out, be realistic and tell yourself it's not going to work out. Um, identify your needs and create your vision where you want to be one day, uh, what steps you need to take to, to, to reach this goal. Um, identify your power center where you're strong, uh, where you need to be strong, where you need to put more focus in. Um, let's say if you're a very passive person, person or a person that's uh, essentially a pushover, um, or someone that gets easily dominated by other people. Um, you need to invest a lot of time and thought on how you can strengthen that, that part of you. Um, create a power center out of that. Um, and then, of course, take action. Uh, set boundaries, communicate boundaries with other people. Um, uh, discuss the consequences or the repercussions about uh, when they do overstep boundaries. Um, 
And the last step, of course, would be to just evaluate your results. Is this boundary working? Should this boundary be changed a little bit? Is it working for you? Um, it's not necessarily is it working for other people because that's not the point of boundaries. Um, it's just to evaluate the results and make sure uh, is this healthy for you? Is, is, is this what you need? Is this what you need? Do you need to implement additional boundaries on this? Are your boundaries a little too strict? Um, are you becoming a yes or no person when you implement these boundaries? Um, all of this needs to, needs to be taken into consideration when you evaluate uh, the, the, the feedback or the results that you got from setting boundaries. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that basically cut, covers everything. Um, I just, uh, like for the information that I got, I'd just like to, to thank the following people, the following organizations for providing me with this information. So CL Stander and Associates are um, uh, therapists that work at Vista Clinic when I was admitted. Uh, they helped me identify a lot of boundaries that I need to set in my life and um, the steps I need to take to, to basically get to that point where I have healthy relationships with people. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, Vista Clinic as well. Um, there's a lot of information on the Better Help YouTube channel. Um, a lot of information about boundaries and such as well. And all the image photography were made by Curida Siena. And you can find her Unsplash account on the URL on screen. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. I think it's one of those things where it takes a bit of self-reflection as well. You know, you need to sit down, you need to think about how does this affect my life? Is this functional for me? And I love that you touched on the fact that you can change where you are. Like you don't have to have the same boundary. You don't have to have the same restrictions. Things can tweak and change throughout that time. And it's been such a helpful thing. So many good tidbits. Thank you. So, Thank you so much. <laughs> before we wrap up, is there anything else that you wish to share with people? Any places or events? I know you guys do some Twitch streaming. Anything else you want us to share? Uh, not really. Um, just the uh, yeah, check out the Daryl conference. There's a lot of um, very very information, uh, yeah, good information that you guys can can gather from this. This is not only in the technical space, but uh, but also in uh, personal growth space. Um, yeah. I do, I have uh, streamed on Twitch quite a bit and uh, shared quite uh, a bit of this information on that as well. I haven't mm -hmm. been too active on the platform bef uh, yet. Uh, I do plan on getting more um, uh, active on that platform, but uh, I'll share more information re regarding that when I do. Cool. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Anine. Really appreciate the, the opportunity. Thank you. It's been awesome. And guys, if you've got questions or things that you want to talk about, or if you need help, please check out the links below and comment below. There is a world of support out there. You are not alone. You do not need to be miserable. You do not need to be unhappy. There's so much support out there. And thank you again for your time, Brandon. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>